So today let's talk about Pin, which is a 1988 horror movie that I've always wanted to see, and I'm rectifying, I rectified it and I've finally seen this movie, which I'm really a big fan of horror movies with dolls or dummies because as a kid I was terrified and I, uh, I faced that fear and actually am now really, really love movies about, like, killer dolls or, like, uh, puppets or dummies. Like, I think that that's always a great a great form of a horror movie because I think dolls are still, even though I've conquered the fear of them from a kid, like, they're still creepy and scary. And this, this is, was a great horror movie. Like, this genuinely surprised me. This, the, the medical dummy in this named Pin, um, wow, this, this character, or this character, it, well, I guess it is technically a character. This medical dummy is genuinely terrifying. It, though, this medical thing that talks, um, to everybody, I might add, that literally, like, he talks back to them, and nobody questions it. I know it's a medical dummy, but and it has responses. But this thing is literally this thing is terrifying. It it and I'm not real and I don't usually get scared of things in movies, but I feel like this was an underratedly creepy uh doll. Like this genuinely scared, scared me and it made me it affected me. I was like it, with the voice too. The voice that comes out of this guy this doll's mouth it's a very low, creepy voice, and it really, really works. And this movie, basic, the basics of this movie is about the that medical dummy that this family has, and these two kids, Leon and Ursula. They've like Leon basically clings on to this two pin, and he becomes. Like, it becomes kind of like his imaginary friend, in a way. Because he talks back to him, like, to everybody else. But the movie does a great job of showing him as a kid and then skipping to whenever they're young adults. And this is genuinely really good, just how they show the story of how... Le uh, this movie is more of a psychological thriller than a real horror movie. Which I'm totally fine with, because this works on that level a lot, like, really well. Because this movie does such a great job with how these characters build up from being quote-unquote normal to, especially Leon, like, he isn't very normal even as a kid, but as it builds up, it's fantastic. The way that he, Leon starts out as this kid who, like I said, becomes fascinated with Pin, it becomes kind of a a childhood imaginary friend, but then it sh it skips forward to where he's a young adult, and he is mentally going insane, and he is losing it with how Pin is like this real person, and I, th I really do like that this movie does a good job where you don't really know if the... I don't think the dummy's alive, but like... Well, actually, you know, like, it, it reminds me of Magic, the movie Magic, where you really don't know if the dummy's alive or not, because there are moments in this movie, too, where this dummy will, well, it, it does it so well that where you can't tell, like, the scene where the parents get killed in the car, they bring Penn with them, because, uh... Leon's losing it, and then, like, the dad takes him, like, I'm gonna take him to a, to a school, and he's gonna be just left there for people to use, since he's, a like, a dummy that has, like, all, like, he, he would work at a school, and they have a scene where they're driving before they die, and, like, they turn a corner, Pin moves up, and stands in the, uh, position of the mirror, of rear, the rear view mirror, and, you can imply that, like, the road did it, but maybe the dummy's alive. And I think that they did a good job of, like, scenes like that where this this dummy, you don't know if it's alive or not. I think it does a really good job of that. And it builds so well on Leon and how he, go, he loses, so, like, he gets so mental just as the movie escalates um, through things that he sees as a kid, like, 
his mother having sex with Pin, or him as an adult where Pin is telling him to, to like like to say like with all these people around him he's saying like like you're the only one that I could they could trust me and like how they're friends and like Pin uses that to his advantage or Leon uses his disturbing thoughts to make that advantage but I think that it it does a great job of building that up and I really really enjoyed this movie and I thought that seriously the way that it builds up the mental breakdown of Leon whether it's with whenever his parents die and then he takes Pen back and then the aunt comes in and then uh, then she dies because of the fear of Pen being in her room and like Leon is told by Pen to do this and and then Ursula gaining um, gaining a boyfriend and then that's causing Leon to kind of lose it more all these things around Leon like really escalate I think it does a good job of that and I like the ending too because it is very ambiguous in a way again like this movie is and I think it does a good job of it um, because the movie ends with Leon Leon and Pin are there and then Ursula through all this frustration uh, everything that she's lost she is furious and like she gets an axe you don't see who she acts as, whether it's Pin or Leon, so it just fades away. Like, the scene fades away after, right before she, like, chops up one of them. And then it shows later where the boyfriend is still alive, so it's her and the boyfriend. They come down to see Pin, who's sitting at the window, and they say, like, Pin, do you need anything? And he says, yeah, play the music box, and he's like... Uh, has Leon called? Has Leon? Have you heard anything from Leon? And then Ursula just looks at him and says, "No, I sorry, I haven't." But she knows that like he's dead. But then they do the twist around where you see Pin's face, and it's Leon's face. So did Leon's psyche become like? Did he fully just become Pin, or did Pin's psyche become Leon? That is such, that was such a cool ending, and it doesn't ever give us the answer. And I I really enjoyed that. It this was a really well done psychological thriller. I don't want to say pure horror. It's really not because it really focuses on character. It focuses on this build up and mental breakdown of this character, and all these people around him, and how it's affecting them, and how it's affecting Leon. And I think that it just really is. Good such a great movie. It does such a great job of everything in terms of, like, building up tension, building up m characters, building up breakdowns, like, and ha being ambiguous at the same time, and I really thought that this did a great job. The only thing I guess I can give this that's a negative is that it looks very TV movie of the week, um, and, it, and I looked online and it said it was really direct to video, which sucks, but... In terms of everything else, like, it's still a really well done horror, uh, psychological thriller. Like, it's a really well done thriller. And it, it does a great job with all of these things that I mentioned. And I think it really is underrated and it really should be looked at. You know, like I said, the only thing I wish is it, look, it was a better looking movie, but it doesn't even look terrible. It's just direct to video quality looking. Um, nothing special about the cinematography, but, but besides that, this does a great job of being a great thriller like this genuinely is a great thriller and um and it the dummy like pin is just really really terrifying like one of the most terrifying looking and terrifying sounding like dummies that I've seen in a movie like that really is going to stick with me that's really memorable about this movie and this movie is real is really memorable and I'm really Glad that I finally got to see it, because it did not let me down. I was thoroughly glad with this whole movie. It was just such a great psychological thriller.